Good evening, good afternoon, good day, wherever you are in this world, tuning into this dawning of a new era, a brand new show, a brand new concept in um, in um, covering just the Australian Croatian football scene, the Oz Crow Soccer Show. My name is Tonchi Prusak, um, or Tonchi Prusak on in Croatian, and um, I'll be one of your co-hosts this evening, and it is an absolute pleasure to be behind the microphone. And um, look, joining me every week from here on end, or that is as of the um, launch date, which is the um, January the 18th next year, coinciding with the 30th anniversary of the recognition of uh, the Republic of Croatia by Australia, is, uh, is going to be a man who needs um, little, little, um, I guess, uh, what's the word? Little uh, um, introduction. Um, he's very, very well known in um, football circles here in Australia um, and certainly the Australian Croatian community. And it is an absolute pleasure to bring onto the screen now um, my co host for the Ozcrow Soccer Show, Mr. Josip Zilic. Josip, um, good evening and how are you, mate? Dobrovecha, Tonchi. Dobrovecha, Svima. I'm fantastic and I'm excited about this, Tonchi. I'm, I'm delighted that we got together and had this conversation to bring forward the news of our wonderful people around Australia and further beyond that in the diaspora. Hearing the news from the people on the street in, in terms of where, where the news is coming from, from their clubs, uh, locally, abroad, but also hearing the developments of Croatian clubs and players and news from overseas as well. Yeah, now look, it, it is an exciting concept, and we did speak about it recently. We thought um, let's let's kick it, kick start it next um, next year, early next year, um, and then we thought let's have a pilot program. Let's let's actually gauge um, a level the level of support, and we also want to know where you're from, where you're tuning in from. So we've already got a few people starting to tune in. The regulars, um, the ones that we generally see. On the um, on the sister program, which is the Football Out West show or the Geelong Region Soccer Show, so a big big shout out to Vladimir Zetovic and Maxi Shentic, two um, two guys well known in the western suburbs of Melbourne. But uh, as you do join in on the uh, on the um, comment section, we'd love to hear from you folks. We'd love to hear where you're from, where you're tuning in, um, and mate, um, tonight well we've got a big action pack show i know it's a pilot show i know it's kind of just a little bit of a taste tester of what people can expect in 2022 but uh what is what are some of the big ticket items that we'll be looking at um in tonight's pilot show well look, we'll start off with uh i think what was really hot off the press at the uh at last weekend and uh to the delight of many many bemoaning Haydook supporters who have been uh, at the behest of Dynamo's success over the last 10 or so years, uh, we now will see uh, an update on that and the big victory that they had, the 2-0 win in the Big Crow Derby. Uh, we'll, th we'll take in some news about um, the Croatians around Australia playing in A-League and, and other competitions um, and some club-related news, of, you know, things such as AGMs, coaches being hired uh, and any other news that is coming forward that way. Yeah, no, it should be good. We've got a special, special guest on tonight. Um, um, oh, well, we, we might as well mention who that special guest is because <laughs> he's another one that needs a little bit of introduction. But, mate, I'll let you do all the uh, honours with, with uh, who our guest is for tonight. Thanks, Tunch. Yes, uh, we're n none other than the president of the Croatian Soccer Association of Australia, New Zealand, Jure Dragovic. Jure is uh, coming up to nine years service for the wonderful Savers and the work that they do in uh, helping coordinate the, uh, the annual tournament, which we've unfortunately last two years uh, had the misfortune of not going not going through it and i'll say i'll say that with a lot with a real deep and heavy heart because we had two cracks at it during this COVID period at north geelong and um mm. i was i was the uh in co-leading co it with uh luke pinger and um you know it was heartbreaking really heartbreaking that we couldn't put it together and uh but not i won't stop on that what i will focus on is our conversation with you and you can give us the latest about the agm that they just had with all the with all our member clubs and also any other developing news coming out of the service particularly with king tom who's our host for 2022 we look forward to getting together as brothers and sisters again now whilst on the subject of you um i'm just noticing in the um comment section there is a fellow that uh, you'll see both you and i know from down geelong way um stuart mallon he is uh he's, um He's, uh, he's an Englishman. He's uh, certainly not of Croatian descent, but his um, little boy play, does play at North Geelong. 
And um, Stuart is a, is a great supporter of, um, of all of our podcasts, in particular the Geelong Region Soccer Show. Let me just say Stuart is um, probably the number two biggest Luton Town supporter in Australia. The number one Luton Town supporter is um, our guest tonight, Jure Dragovic. So Stuart, make sure you, <laughs> you hang around. Yeah, and we're going to hear a little bit about um, um, Jure's Luton Town obsession that has gone back 40 plus years. And um, he'll tell us all about those uh, halcyon days of Luton Town. And um, I, do, I do believe he, he was in love. His first, his first crush was a player called Paul Walsh back in the 70s or 80s. Oh, okay. but, uh, <laughs> it just he must have told to that story you. a few times for you to remember it, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll ask you about that. But uh, um, it just goes to show, Josip, this show, yes, it is about Cro Croatian soccer and Australian-Croatian soccer, but it's not purely just for Croatians. It's for anyone that can understand the English language. And uh, anyone football, talks all language. football talks football all languages. Football talks all languages. Football talks all languages, indeed, indeed. And, and we're going to look, look at it purely from um, an Australian. Of a break there i'm not too sure what looks like um the gremlins are at it again unfortunately we're going to now um push ahead mate so let's go straight through to the news desk um yosip let's um let's look at well we're going to touch on the um the croatian derby the eternal derby they call it um but yeah look let's let's just quickly go on the main points and then later on we will um look at it in, in a bit more detail when we look at the uh, football scene in croatia Terrific, yes. Yeah. So uh, a big 2-0 win for, for Hajduk on the day. Uh, goals to in the 60th minute to Marko Livaya and in the nine, 94th minute for Emir Sahiti. Uh, it looked from all visual footage like an exciting uh, encounter. Um, it was probably inspired even more when Livaya scored that goal and did the double hurdle over the fences and ran to yeah. To the to the uh, traveling Torfida fans and um, revving them up even further just to make the occasion much more memorable. Now um, let's um, we, like we said we're going to touch touch on all things um, the Croatian league and we'll talk a little bit more about that a bit later on. Um, but we'll move to to matters closer at hand. Um, the Australian Croatian connection in the A League. Um, now um, I, I guess we'll, we'll, we'll touch briefly on this because. There's not many Croatians in the A-League as there probably once was a, upon a time, but there's quite a few both administrators, coaches and players making their mark. One of them was a, a young uh, um, youngster from Geelong who over the last two weeks has stepped up to take the penalty for Melbourne victory, getting them through to the uh, next round of the FFA Cup, which is really important because it means they're now going to be playing um, the Gold Coast right up in Queensland. Yeah, a, a fantastic news for young Anthony and um, delight for us, uh, both from the administrative and from a coaching perspective at North Geelong, to see players who mature and grow and attract the interest of uh, clubs in the professional rungs of, of the world. So uh, mm. all credit all credit to Anthony for pursuing his interests at a, at a professional level and great to see him out there. Um, I think I made a post during the week that, you know, there was a point in time there where I think Anthony himself was probably um, not too sure how he's going to come out of that head injury that he had. But um, we're all delighted that he's come through stronger and he looks really fit. And um, look, I think he plays above his years and I look forward to seeing many more minutes on the park for him. But uh, the exciting part about that, because of his last minute courageous uh, attitude, he's... Um, He's earned the club a uh, trip to the Gold Coast to take on the Gold Coast Knights, who are being uh, marshaled these days by Scotty McDonald. And um, we're going to be looking forward to seeing uh, the action live uh, at uh, 7.30pm local for the Gold Coast uh, people and 8.30 for us over here in Dallas Savings Land. And it's being held at the Croatian Sports Centre in Carrara. So uh, for the locals, get out there, get your tickets. They're on sale now. And I've, I've seen the post go out so you can book your tickets. Um, but make it a big affair for Gold Coast Knights um, and for the local clubs. So, you know, revenue is always wel welcome and appreciated, but much more so bring the atmosphere, make it colourful and let Melbourne Victory know uh, who they've come to visit. Absolutely. Now, um, I guess, you know, um, of all the clubs, you know, um, and, and I'm, I'm just putting up the A-League ladder and um, look, the, 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 I guess the most... <laughs> 
I'm going to be honest. I find the A-League very boring, to be honest. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and there's a reason why we called it the Oz Crow Soccer Show, I guess the old soccer um, and new football, whatever. But but um, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to go out on a perch and I'm going to say, to me, the only interesting thing about the A-League is, is, is seeing the Australian Croatians, the Croatian connection. And if we look at the ladder, Josip, after two rounds, um, number one, we've got MacArthur, and number two, Melbourne Victory. Um, yep. two Croatian coaches at the helm and yep. Western United, who did have a Croatian coach last year, but not any longer. Um, yeah. well, they're in third spot, I suppose. Oh, geez, it's good to, good to see that, that, you know, there's still a, a pretty strong Croatian connection to the top teams there in the A-League. And, um, we now need to translate that into the Socceroos because apart from a, a, a yeah. Croatian born naturalized Australian, Fran Karacic, we haven't got any Croatians in the um, in the Socceroos. Um, what do you make of that, mate? What do you, uh, you and you can be as politically incorrect or correct as you like. <laughs> first thing I'll first thing I'll say is there's a saying that I that I keep hearing around the traps is "Bez Ravata nema Zlata." Absolutely, we are unabashedly Australian Croatian, and we're very proud of that. And we 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 are not afraid to say how it is, and that's true. Oh, look, yeah. I, I think I've been very uninspired by watching the Socceroos play. Um, and I, I know my kids, they will get up in the middle of the night to watch Croatia and do well. And they feel this connection with them. They're third generation now, Yossi, yeah. as are your kids. Yeah. When it comes to the Socceroos, they find it a struggle, as do I, to connect with these players. They, they I don't know. I, I, yeah, look, I, I think there's that. But, I, you know, I mean, you can. I, I'm, I'm probably a little bit more um, open minded <laughs> about the A League itself. I'm not, not exactly on the uninspired uh, bracket. I do pay close attention to it, I watch it a fair bit. Um, I, 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 th I just think that it, it'll come to a point in time where the engagement um, needs to be there in order for you to make those connections going forward. <clears throat> in terms of the Socceroos and. and um, trying to find a connection with the players and being yeah. sort of enamoured by their performances, it comes down to who's leading them. Now, I'm not having to dig at Arnie here by any stretch of the imagination, but I think he is a clever man. He's going to be working with what he's got. Um, and he's if he sees that he hasn't got the creativity or the flair or the or, or that type of uh, play in his in his rank in his rank, um, then he has to turn to a style of football that's going to accommodate for making life difficult for people to score against him. And try and jag the, the goals as yeah. you go. Now, against the middle to lower teams, you expect Australia to always put at least a couple of goals through. But where they're going to struggle naturally is your careers, Japan, um, Saudi Arabia, those type yeah. of those type of nations, right? And that's Look, the scary part. We saw part. that, didn't we? Yeah, we yeah. saw that in the World Cup qualifiers, the recent World Cup qualifiers. What was it? A record-breaking 11, 12 wins in a row? Yeah, 11 um, wins in a row. Then it's sort of the, the wheels fell off and it all against went Against the better teams, and, yeah. Big yeah. call out uh, to my like... Rojo Vieco on the on the chat. I just saw him <laughs> pop up. So, g'day, Rojo. Nice to see you on there. <laughs> where's Vie where's Vieco's love from? Vieco. Vieco's in sunny Brizzy, mate. Oh, there you go. We got Brisbane as well. We got Melbourne. We got yeah. Brisbane, and hopefully, we got a few other people um, tuning in as well. Um, and folks, look, this is the thing. You you, you you'll be often hearing. Uh, Yosip will be providing the little bit of um, the balance. The uh, the um, the uh, the 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 what's the words the objectivity? I'll probably be the, a little the broad, bit more the broader view, Tonch. The broader view, let's broad, call it the broader yeah. view. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to balance each other nicely. Yeah, uh, now before we do go on, let's 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 talk about a little bit about what our mission statement is in a, in a nutshell. And um, here it is. Um, so look, this is what we've actually kind of said. Um, um, you know what, what, what it is about, or soccer and orgamit, as we say in Croatian, has always been more than a sport to Croats in Australia since the post-war pioneers of our community first arrived back in the um, early 1950s. Now that is on our Facebook page, so it's on the Oscro Soccer Show po um, podcast Facebook page. It is pinned to the top, so do have a read of that. That's what it's all about. We've developed the all-new Australian Croatian Soccer Show podcast to be broadcast weekly in English. And we'll endeavour to cover all the latest news, views, current affairs concerning all things football, both with the Croatian football clubs here in Australia and football in Croatia in general. Um, and look, we, 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 we must say, we, obviously it will be a news, um, a news bulletin, news show to an extent, but, but we're going to endeavour, um, folks, to, to provide a, a magazine-style current affairs program, more, of a, more so than, than anything else. So especially things that are going to be 
really interesting, really um, relevant, really topical. We're going to try and really cover that. And, um, and you know, hopefully we might may even have some, uh, you know, interesting news as well with regards to the um, Croatian Soccer Association of Australia uh, later on with um, our, our um, guest, Jure Dragovic, because um, the AGM was just held recently, I think, only a couple well, of weeks ago. It was. And speaking of the AGM, hello, Stephen. Mr. Skorinak has popped up on the chat. He reckons I'll be the Pameton one. What do you reckon, Tunch? <laughs> Well, uh, <laughs> Steve and I go back a long, long way and um, probably a good 15 years. And um, it's very, very hard to uh, remember anything Pamit not coming from uh, the mouth of one Steph Skorniak. But <laughs> no, I mean, no that's the look, nicest possible. We've got our tip our um, lids to uh, people like Steve. Stephen. Uh, I think he's up to 104 years on the Savers now. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's been, oh, geez. <laughs> and not out. Make, make that, he's, he's doing better than Bradman. But, um, uh, well, well done, uh, Steve. Good yeah. innings. <coughs> now, moving along, um, we're still remaining on the Australian-Croatian scene. Now, uh, uh, something, a development in the last few months that's very close to your heart, your spec, because you spent a bit of time up in um, in the Hunter Valley up in New South Wales. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. the, the resurgence or the rebirth or the uh, resuscitation, what do you want to call it, of Whatever Newcastle, you Croatia, it, uh, FC. It was, Tell us more, it, mate. Tell us more. It brought, a, it brought a warm feeling to my heart. Um, you know, I spent a little over two years in Newcastle and I got to know uh, a little bit about the Croatian community there. But, but uh, you know, I was in the armed forces, so I couldn't spend a lot of time uh, in the community because you're constantly at work. But the little time that I was able to and, you know, and the little bit of uh, football that I did play at the club, um, it was it was a nice nice small community. It, it's not a large community by any stretch of the imagination, but you know what they are they are passionate and they're loving and they're embracing mm. and welcoming, just like many of our communities around the country and around the world. And people like uh, the Marinchich family, Karl Zivkovic, who I had a close connection with, and uh, people might know Karl from the old punch bowl days on Friday nights, pulling beers with Barišić behind the bar. Um, so when I saw the news that they come together and they've put a bit into into the football rungs again, uh, and they've entered in the, the third division of Northern New South Wales, so um, I'm actually looking forward to visiting Newcastle later on this year at the time of their Crow Festa. Um, I would like to, at that time, maybe get a chance to interview some people and maybe present uh, a little bit of a promo on behalf of them to the wider audience of our of our members on this show. Um, and uh, to, to Newcastle, congratulations. Um, you've, you've put a smile on this man's face to see you guys back in action, and I look forward to getting down to see a match. Now, there's, um, this weekend, um, uh, there is a player meet and greet there at, um, at Newcastle, Croatia, at the Wickham Sports Club. Um, so 11th December, which is Saturday, I believe, is that right? At 12 p.m. Yeah. And... Um, We've got some more information there. So there you go. Now, this is interesting. Um, do you know anything about this? Um, there is a uh, community collective called the Smokva Club or something like that. Is that right? Um, yeah. Smokva Community Garden, and that's part of the um, Croatian Wickham Sports Club cooperatives. Yeah. There you go. Do you know much yeah. about that? That's I, I don't know much about the Smokva community. I think there's probably something that evolved over the years. But uh, the club itself was always there. The Croatian Sports Club in Wickham has always mm. been there forever and a day. And whenever I've driven through Newcastle, or I've, I think two or three years ago, I took my older son for a, a bit of a five-day getaway to Port Stephens. And um, you always pop in, pop in there and just say good day. Um, so that, that club itself kept operating. And it used to be a lawn bowls club, and they'd do barefoot bowls and things like that. But, uh, yeah. It's now evolved back into being a football club. And as you can see on that logo there, it was 84 when they first got cracking. And to mm. see him back in action in 21, it's wonderful. Now, there's been a changing of the guard um, at, at, at a couple of clubs. Let's go firstly over to Dandenong City, who had their AGM a couple of weeks ago. And this yeah. was on their, um, on their, um, age, on their social media uh, channels the other day. Tell us a bit more, Josipa. Oh, someone both you and I got some time, uh, spent some time with on when we were both individually on the servers at different periods of our lives. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. None other than Mr. Tony Dorotic, uh, um, it says here after 15 years of service, but I, I, I tell you, I think, it, I think it was longer than that, mate. So, uh, Tony, tip my lid to you. So on the service you provided yeah. your club and your community and the, and the diaspora. Thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. Um, and seeing people like Robert uh, Jakovljevic and the Ivica Klarica 
Uh, and the closer family, synonymous with Dandenong City and Chelsea Haydook in its day. Um, and also introducing Marto Andriashevich and the Melissa Radosevic into the into the gang there, and they'll take the club further and stronger. And with with the foundations that Tony has put in, and those people have been around for a long time too. So it won't be new to them, but uh, it'll pro it probably for a lot of us it'll be new to not having Tony at the helm. Yeah, no, it'll be it'll be. Um... Yeah, it's it's definitely a changing of the guard. Now, Robert Yakovlevic has been a previous president of of um of um Dandenong City. He was probably the president before Tony came along, and now um Tony sort of interrupted that with the fifteen year reign. But um uh, yeah, uh, we do we wish uh, Robert and his crew all the very very yeah, best at the Dandenong City. Now, another changing of the guard happened at um at, at our club, the club that we're both um very um, intimately connected with, North Geelong. Um, Johnny Didlitzer. Um, uh, the president um, had to step down mid-year after he uh, moved and assumed a role as the football director at Melbourne Victory. So good to see a, um, an Australian-Croatian administrator in the A-League. Um, and um, last night, the North Geelong Warriors had their AGM. Um, you'll see, tell us a bit more about that. Look, it was, uh, it was, a, it was a nice evening and we got to um, uh, inform the members of all the developments that happened at the club. Um, I think the, the two big points to take here are the amount of infrastructure work that has gone on, gone on at North Geelong over the years has continued. And to see the uh, the upgrade of the lighting for grounds two and three and fencing, pavement works. Now, there's over half a million dollars worth of funding that's been attracted to the club and it's still coming in. There's still more grant work going on. Um, and, and credit to the team for getting really stuck into that sort of work. And the other part we need to focus on is is the level of female participation at the board at North Geelong. I won't yes. say it's yep. I won't say it's uh, you know it's groundbreaking because I'm sure there's clubs out there that have majority female uh, members at the board. But for a club like ours, we've come uh, we've come a long way. And it's one thing to focus on um, players, you know, making sure we've got a base for female players, male players, and, and the like. Um, but we also got to back that up at an administrative level and planning for our strategies going forward. And to see people coming on board and staying on board, like Anne Marie and Maria have, have stayed on board. Uh, and thank you very much for that too. But you know, for, for me, uh, look, it's a soft spot for me. My wife's come on board to become the treasurer. Um, oh, yeah. Now, did so, she have uh, a choice, your tip, or, or yeah, was she, had a, she had a choice. <laughs> she, had, she had as much choice as I, had when I, when I became. <laughs> About as much as when I could be, became president of the club. That's as much choice. <laughs> <laughs> and then cousin Tom Trubkovich taking on the, rain, the reins as president too. So it's in the family now. So yeah. I think, I, I don't know whether I've, I, I may have uh, tainted these people and made them feel like it's a, it, it's uh, the place to be. But you know, you know what? It, it is. It's, it's a great place to be. And seeing people like Josip uh, stay on board and guide them, the football direction and, and Karina with the infrastructure side of things. Then you can see there that the supportive committee there's a great band of people there looking after juniors um groundworks operational works um lydia jakic is stall stalwart of the club um you yeah. know many people know her know her husband uh, vlado who's put in a, a, a ginormous amount of work at the club uh, and seeing lydia there and you know her daughters come in and i see her daughters come in and they they run they run around and they know they've got the place clicking mm. too so it's a very much uh, as we all know it's a family vibe when you get down there and um on to 2022 yep. for bigger and better things. And we've got a great report from Football Victoria to tell us we're doing great things. So we've got to believe that and uh, believe in ourselves and keep going forward. Now, speaking of North Geelong, uh, a player from the Melbourne Knights that has been recruited, in fact, one of the first off-season signings at North Geelong is um, Caleb Mikulich. So, uh, yeah, welcome, North Caleb. Geelong. Caleb, um, um, he um, uh, has spent the last few years at the Melbourne Knights in the NPL system. So, um, so he's going to be a, a massive um, um, a bonus there. And another former North Geelong junior um, and a good family friend of yours, um, Josip, and he's made yep. the move from um, from uh, from, from Summer Knights. Street to Churchill Reserve is Nikola Jurkovic. Yep. Now that yep. is going to be a massive, massive coup for Dynamo. He's going to really shore up that defence and uh, he's going to add a little bit of um, mongrel as well to that defence. Uh, it'll be very hard to score goals. Um, at yeah. Churchill Reserve against the likes of uh, Jurkovic and Co. Hey, yeah, that's right. Uh, look, uh, I think Dynamo's um, really on the front foot with their signings at the moment. They've 
they've got some uh, secured some signings uh in terms of new players including nicola which is great to see and uh, for him to uh, forge out uh the uh, and that's another stage of his football career somewhere else and i'm sure that's a you know it, it wouldn't have been an easy decision for nicola to do um to do that when you consider how many years he's been at nights um but also it, the existing players at uh dinamo as well are hanging around and re-signing so uh, Karuni Razov's got a, a big job ahead of him and he's shoring up the talent to do that. Yeah, a big shout out to J Jason Zeri, the, the football director at Dynamo, who's been there for, well, he's been there for a while, six, seven years or yeah. so. Yeah. Um, um, you know, someone else who's, who's not of Croatian descent, he's, he's of Maltese descent, but he's put so much of heart and soul into, into a Croatian back club and he, and he, and he loves it there. He, he, he just loves the feeling. Um, so big shout out to, to Jason and he, well done, he Jason. certainly would be behind um, that signing. Now, as we can see yeah. on the picture there, um, this is footage from the Gold Coast Knights. Um, this was actually oh, from their um, Facebook page, I think it was. Um, yep. uh, and this was, um, this was, I believe, the lights being installed at the, um, at the Gold Coast. Um, yeah, they've Coast installed Coast. 500 Lux lighting, so um, they can do any kind of TV coverage they want there. Wow. With that sort of lighting, you can get a suntan, I think. <laughs> Would you need that up on the Gold Coast? <laughs> well, I think so. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, be up, I'll be up there shortly. I'll test them out for them. <laughs> yeah. It might, might be a good idea. <laughs> of course, they don't have daylight savings up in Queensland, so they, pro they definitely do need lights better. That's, that's yeah. absolutely fantastic, isn't it? That really, really is, um, yeah. um, you know, a, a, a great investment. I know the um, pitch is being done up and what you're not and all of that kind of stuff as well. So they're doing yeah. a fair bit of work to the pitch. So that's going to be fantastic. All in all in readiness for that uh, December 22 showdown with Melbourne Victory. Um, yes, um, you know, I'm great to see um, Anthony Leban. Ivan Kelava, former Dinamo Zagreb player. Uh, yeah. Mac Piranovic, former soccer Yeah, Yeah, Matthew's getting back to full and, fitness. So he's uh, starting yeah. to get, his, get the kilometres into the legs. Tony Popovich coach, John Didelitz as well. I never thought I'd see this, but Melbourne Victory has got that many Croatian <laughs> Croatian yeah, got, connections there. But uh, Tommy, Tommy heart, Uskruk at MacArthur. Yes, that's right. Yeah. But my yeah. heart will be with the Gold Coast Knights come December 22. Sorry, Anthony. Oh, you gotta you gotta put all the eggs in that in the in the chicken basket, mate. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. But it's uh it's it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm sure that might be a, a, a good reason to have an early Christmas party at a lot of places. Um um I'm I'm putting it out there. I think that the Lebon family in Bell Park will be having a uh Bell, a Christmas party, Stanko, if you're listening. <laughs> Obviously that's Anthony's father. Yeah. Um, Rajan, Rajan in the front yard, yeah. maybe. <laughs> yeah mate um we're now going to have a quick break when we return we're going to look at the um football scene in croatia so don't go away folks <laughs> Welcome back to the Oz Crow Soccer Show. It is our pilot episode, our um, main episode, if you like, or our, our, our first episode will be launching on Tuesday, 18th of January. Now, that comes a day after the 17th of January, which, Josip, um, we know is the 30th anniversary that Australia recognised Croatia way back in 1992. Um, so it's going to be, no doubt... Um, an auspicious occasion. Um, oh, we yeah. certainly hope so. Um, but, mate, let's turn our attention to Croatia. And, um, well, we're going to first of all look at the Prva HNL, but Prva Liga. Then we'll look at the Druga Liga very, very quickly. And then we're going to jump over the border. And some of the Croatian teams are doing very well in um, BiH and Bosnia Herzegovina. We'll talk a bit more about that. But, Josip, um, let's look at the Prva Liga. Let's look at the results first up. Fantastic. So yeah, got it's a uh, held Osek to a one all, and that's a that's a bit disappointing for Osek, who's been uh, holding top spot for a little while. But uh, they've given that up to Rijeka, who had a thumping four one win over Dragovoyats. Uh, we all have, a, I think, everyone, everyone should have a soft spot for Hrvatski Dragovoyats. Yeah, yeah, they're not they're not the sort of club that just uh, spends all their life uh, and yeah. time focusing on football programs. They they are about a community. 
and they are a, a lot of focus about people that uh, unfortunately had the wrong end of the deal during the the war and conflict. So I always yeah. have got a soft spot for 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 the club there. And they do a wonderful job to get themselves up into the Prima Liga. Lokomotiva and Shibnik in a one all. Um, so that was probably about an expected result. But it, the result of the round would have to go to the two nil for Dino, uh, for Heidelk over Dinamo. Um, you probably thought a bit more fight, a bit more grunt might have come out of Dinamo, but it looks like it's um, it, it, it's it's reaching out into the coaching ranks and the coaches resigned after the game as well too. So, yeah. um, but you know, as we said before, goals to uh, she- Shahiti and um, Levaya. And then Bio. the 2-1, yep, and then the 2-1, probably a little bit unexpected for Slavin Balupo away to Istra getting the 2-1 there. Yeah, We might jump over to the ladder now, mate. We do. There's Rijeka up on top with uh, 36 points after um, 17 games. Look at the, look at the um, congestion at the top. Osiek in second spot with 35. Heiduk with 33. Now, all three of them have got one game in hand. Dinamo, two games in hand against Heiduk and against Istra. They're on 31 points. So, look, um, there's four teams that can literally leapfrog each other. And, look, I am an absolute fan of the Haenel. I, I, I do follow the Haenel a lot, uh, probably <laughs> more than a few people in Croatia <laughs> do. But um, I, I just think it is an absolutely fascinating league, and it has developed into a really, really good quality league. And what's more... A lot of the youngsters coming up through the ranks, you know, at the ages of 16, 17, 18, they're doing extraordinarily well. But Osijek, um, um, they're going to be next year playing in a 12,000-seater stadium, an all-seater stadium, an all-undercover stadium, the best one in Croatia by a mile. They've got Nenad Bielica, who I do rate. I think he's <laughs> he's a bit of well, an they're... arrogant coach, but you got to have that. You got to. Their know? entire but setup is coach. fantastic. If you have a look at the, oh. the, I think it's a nine-year um, infrastructure plan, but it's it's phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. and they're not resting there. Um, Bielica is reported as saying that over the winter break he is going to be pursuing Gorica striker Christian Lovric, who um, is a is a gun of a striker, and he's, he's you know. Goritz is a team that punches above its weight. Um, yeah. And when they had um, Dombrowskis, the current Heidel coach um, at the helm of Goritz, they did amazing things, amazing things. So, look, they are doing incredibly well. Another club that's doing, um, and that's got a bit of an Australian-Croatian connection, number six, Lokomotiva. Yeah. Um, their football director, Denis Gudasic, ex-Geelong boy, who is over there now. Um, and that's the, the club that Fran Karacic came up through yeah, as that's well. Right, yeah. Um, they're, they're another club that really kind of, I guess, struggles. They don't have much supporters. Um, their budget is is a, a minute amount of what the big fours is. But look, they're still in the top six and doing extremely well. But yeah, as you said, Dragovolia, gosh, I'd love to see them survive. I really would. Yeah. I think they're, they're just that, I don't know, hard, I, poor, I told patriotic you, club. Yeah. The big call, the yeah. big call out from Maxi Sentic. How, how long has it been since the big four have been this close? Oh, let's see what Maxi Sentich has to say. The big four have not been this close in the lead up to Christmas since the early 2000s. Ah, oh, nice work. Nice work, Maxi Shen- Sentich. Um, he's got, he's got some, he's got some, uh, he's always got some really interesting tidbits of information. Um, yep. Now, it is, he's, yeah, he's before, right, he's running the money. That's, 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 that's the closest I've, I can recall it for a long, long time. Yeah, yeah no, I mean, absolutely. Dinamo Din- Din- got knocked out of the cup, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah, it just goes and, to show it's uh, it's all tightening up. Yeah, and it's it's good for Croatian football. Absolutely good for Croatian yeah. football. Now let's go through to some of the um the, the upcoming fixtures. Um, so t- tomorrow morning, in fact, um, look at that first versus second catch up game. Rijeka yeah. taking on Osijek. Well worth game. getting up in the middle of the night. That's going to be at the Rujevica Stadium in um, Rijeka. Um, an interesting game. Look, Rijeka should they win this? They'll what shoot four points clear. If Osiek yeah. wins, they'll they'll bounce back into top spot. So a lot riding on that game. And then let's move our attention to uh, uh, round 19 this weekend, Yossi. So Istra uh, is going to try and bounce back from that uh, unexpected loss to Slavon Belupo uh, at home to Dragovoyas. But uh, I do want Dragovoyas to take the win there. Uh, Lokomotiva has the chance to... Uh, to upset Hayduk this time, uh, so Hayduk has to take the trip up north again uh, into the into the capital and see if they can uh, do a a, a, a double. Yeah, uh, no, that's not going to be easy. That's no, not going to be easy. easy. 
Yeah. Lokomotiva has always been Hayduk's bit of a nemesis almost, um, and, and particularly at the Karanchevich Stadium, although in the cup, in the recent cup, I think uh, Hayduk smashed it, uh, Lokomotiva 6-2. But uh, yeah, don't 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 count on Lokomotiva just uh, putting out the white flag in that one. Um, yeah. yeah, moving along. Moving along, and then the Ekers at home to to Gorica. And as we said, Gorica is one of those teams that have that uh, little bit of uh, grunt about them and make things difficult. So uh, it could be an interesting uh, few days for the Eka, whether how they, how they come out of the game against Osiek uh, tonight, and then to see how they get into the weekend. They've got a couple of tough customers to deal with. Um, yeah, while we're we talking to... about Gorica, sorry, sorry to cut you off. While we're talking yeah. about Gorica, guess what? Another Australian Croatian connection, former Sydney sider Anthony Karlik, who's um, uh -huh. in, the, uh, in, the, in the midfield there at Gorica, attacking midfield. He was a former Hajduk splitter junior, um, or you know, in the second team there. Um, and now he's moved to Gorica in the uh, or satellite city of um, Zagreb, Velika Gorica. Um, so there's a, there's another little Croatian connection happening at um, at in the high nil. Fantastic. Uh, and then uh, you got Osijek. Osijek wants to clearly want to come out of tonight's game uh, with with the with the points so they can head into the game against Šibenik at home and and then really solidify their position in that you know top spot. And then Zagreb has the challenge of taking on Slaven Belupo. Now Slaven Belupo, all right, they're a little bit on the on the downside, but um, they do have that ability to upset. So you know, you never know what can come at this. And with, with Dinamo having a uh, an off patch, you never know what could happen there. Now, if you cast your mind back to the opening day of the um, current HNL season, it was, in fact, Slaven Belupo that inflicted a um, opening day loss to um, a loss against or defeat against Dinamo. So, uh, yeah, Dinamo, Dinamo got to be very, very careful on this one. I'll tell you what, it's, it's, it's not going to be all ready there. And look, the grounds in Croatia now are starting to get very heavy. Um, yeah. that, that'll be interesting to see how that's going to affect because particularly the players for Os of Osijek and Rijeka, they're going to be playing two games now or three games in the space of, what, seven, eight days. Um, so they're going to get quite leg weary. Um, how that's going to affect their performance over the next four or five days, well, time will tell. So that will be rather interesting, no doubt. But, um, mate, I think that brings us to the end of our... Um, um, oh no! Let's let's talk about we we'll talk. We have to talk about the um Beha competition, don't we? Let's jump um, over the Beha. There's some good news there, mate. Yeah, let's look at the results first of all in the 19th round, which is the um, last round before the winter break over there. That was played over the weekend. Tell us a bit more about some of those uh, games. Uh, oh look, particularly we'll, we'll the Croatian in, teams. We'll, we'll jump into the those particular focus, uh, which is for Posuše. Having a nil-all draw, they're starting to hold their ground a little bit and becoming one of those uh, teams that's difficult to break down. And I'm delighted for them because they're a, they're a small club um, in the sort of like that nor northern section of Herzegovina on, on your way out from, um, from uh, what, most, not Mostad, uh, anyway. Chitluk, when you come out of Chitluk and you head north, <laughs> yep, and you start heading now, back, they get your way to the border. They got promoted, they promoted they? yeah. Yep, yeah, this is yep, yeah, this is their first year in. And then Zrinski, a nice convincing six two win. Oh, and Zrinski's ha Zrinski's having a hell of a year. So uh you know what I'd love to see? I'd love to see Zrinski qualify for at least the Europa and mm. get through. Like I'd love to see that happen. One of the one of the crow teams from Bosnia Herzegovina to just to sneak yeah. it over and qualify in there. Uh, and then uh, Shirokubig. Now Shirokubig sort of fell away a little bit, then come good again, and then now they're having a little bit of a knee buckle time again. And they, and it's not not a, it's against a formidable side. Like Jeyo's always strong, and Jeyo's a strongly backed club that um, always had the the resources to do well. Uh, so they've unfortunately gone down one nil there. Okay, um, no. there we go. So we've got the um, we've got the we've got the um the ladder there. We can go through the ladder now. Yep. So as we can see, uh, Zinski on top, um, holding the ground there with a nice four-game lead there over Tuzla. Um, as we go down the list, uh, you can see the top fours finished off with uh, Sarajevo, but knocking on the door there, Shiro Kibdeg trying to make their way in and trying to make some ground onto those uh, European qualifying spots. And like I mentioned a little bit earlier, Postrush, you know, put your, people put your put your faith, put your backing into Postrush to lift up from that spot and get away from the relegation area. And see if they can climb a, just a couple of rungs higher. Um, excellent. There you go. Look at that, Zirinsky. Great to see. Great to see. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we return, we're going to have our first, our, our only guest of the um, pilot show, 
the president of the Croatian Soccer Association of Australia, Jure Dragovic. We're back after that little short break. Um, <laughs> well, I don't know what's going on with the uh, the gremlins on tonight. The, the technology, I think everyone in the household's jumping on the uh, YouTube. I think I think that's what it is at the moment. <laughs> Gonna have to tell them to uh, stop it. Yeah. Ah, look, it's an absolute pleasure to now bring to the um, as our guest on the um, pilot episode of the um, Ozcro Soccer Show, Mr. Jure Dragovic, the president of the Croatian Soccer Association of Australia. Jure, welcome to the microphone. Welcome, Jure. Good evening, Josip, and uh, all your viewers and listeners. Thank you for the invitation. Jure, let's get started. Um, two weeks ago, or something like that, there was the um, AGM of the um, of the Croatian Soccer Association of, uh, of Australia. It has been a real tumultuous time the last couple of years, hasn't it? It really, really has been, um, you know, obviously with, with everything that has been going on here in Australia and around the world. But uh, yeah, look, what, what were some of the highlights of the, the last year or the last couple of years or lowlights as well, I suppose, from a Sarvis point of view? Uh, essentially, not much to report from a Sarvis <laughs> perspective. Um, uh, we're obviously an extension of um, the activity of our clubs. And um, for, for the most part, uh, well, we all know here in Victoria, we've had uh, two suspended seasons. New South Wales had a suspended season. Um, and so obviously with, you know, all the restrictions uh, across all facets of life, um, our tournament was unable to be uh, held by North Geelong in 2020. We had another bash at it in 2021. And Victoria was probably harder hit than most. So um, unfortunately, we couldn't um, continue down that road. Um, but the Gold Coast Croatian community put their hand up uh, but even they succumbed back in August to, to COVID. So the last two years, unfortunately, we've uh, missed out on having a tournament. So, um, yeah, the, uh, last Friday's AGM was a pretty much a straightforward affair. Um, but we all share the confidence that uh, from a national perspective that if we continue down this route that um, we'll be uh, back at uh, having our tournament 2022 at uh, Carlton Islam in Sydney. Mm. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, uh, Jure, speaking of uh, Claire Tomislav, uh, they gave us a bit of a brief wrap-up at the AGM. Um, do, you, do you want to give us a bit of a couple of points that they've uh, emphasised with regards to their planning? Yeah, no, it, um, this uh, tournament at King Tom in Sydney promises, um, uh, and it's been in the planning for the best part of two years, um, so they're well down the, the route of... Um, uh, the, the planning of the tournament, all things going well. Um, it represents the first tournament in New South Wales since uh, King Tom had the tournament last back in 2011. So it's been a long time coming. Um, the infrastructure uh, from a planning perspective is pretty much uh, locked in. Um, we'll obviously have the, um, the benefit of uh, hosting games at, um, at King Tom, uh, at the Croatian Sports Centre in Sydney. Uh, there'll be a second pitch, a smaller pitch uh, ready there. They will probably be able to, to cater for masters and veterans teams. Um, and aside from that, they're taking over the newly developed, um, redeveloped showgrounds uh, in Liverpool, which I think is around about three and a half k's away from King Tom, so all within oh, very great. close vicinity. Yeah. And uh, they'll take they'll take over that venue, lock, stock, and barrel. Uh, in terms of uh, all the grounds there. So there is um, a FIFA accredited main pitch there. There's an artificial one and there will be scope for three more pitches, uh, undercover grandstand and the whole lot. So um, essentially there's a set of grounds that we envisage will be using. Um, and obviously the, uh, the final uh, and all the finals will be back at King Tom on the Sunday. So um, the, the tournament's got to a to level, fortunately, over the last five, six, seven years um, that uh, we've uh, 
annually exceeded 50 teams plus, and so the requirement for at least a minimum of six pitches has become the norm. Yeah. Now, yeah. speaking of of the format of the of the of the tournament, obviously with everything that has gone on in the past couple of years, and probably trying to look at contingencies and things like that, has the service sort of um, looked at the idea of maybe changing the format, whether it be done over different venues or different days or different weeks or whatever the case may be, or just having senior men's and women's or whatever the case may be. Has there been any talk about rejigging the format, you know, just in case, obviously, um, COVID strikes again in 12 months' time and, um, you know, we can't have mass gatherings like we have had in the past? Uh, that's it's, it's a challenge. I mean, uh, all, all the, we've, we've actually, the tournament has grown significantly over the last five or six years. Yeah. Um, we, we introduced a, a fifth division back in Dandenong the first year in 2019, the veterans and over 45s. Um, so, like I said, it's, yeah, for, and that's the difficult thing and that's what North Geelong faced, yeah. unfortunately, um, two years ago where um, we've got, fortunately, 26 member clubs that are all very active um, the vast majority of them continue to, to send teams in good numbers to tournaments. Um, and obviously there is a there is a divide in terms of the, the divisions. Um, not all of our clubs, but a lot of them have got senior women's teams, so we're always going to cater for the women. Um, but with some very strong NPL clubs across the country now, they obviously fill the Division 1 void. Uh, but Division 2 is our largest division, which takes in, uh, you know, usually around about 20 teams um, from yeah. across Australia. Yeah. And then you've got the Masters and the Veterans. So the it's it's basically an all or nothing thing. We, we really want to avoid getting yeah. into a position where we selectively have to invite teams or limit the amount of numbers. So, and that's unfortunately one of the challenges we face at Geelong. Um, but uh, having said that, like I said, uh, Nardam also said that... Uh, in 10 months' time, uh, we'll have uh, 50 plus teams uh, congregating once again as a uh, celebration of not just Croatian football, but our culture as well. Terrific. Josip? Yeah, uh, Yuri, um, during the AGM, there was some um, discussion regarding a potential uh, visit from overseas from either Joe Simonich or the Han AS. Um, is there any, any follow-up that you'd like to share with the, the wider audience at this point in time, or is that something that will come to fruition later, depending on how the um, environment pans out with the pandemic? Yeah, I'll, well, listen, I'm not in a position to... Uh, well, I know that discussions are ongoing. Um, it, uh, the, the topic was introduced uh, by Pavel Yusuf, um, during, uh, the Melbourne Knights president, during our AGM. Um, I know conversations have been going on for a while, even when Josip Shimonich was here um, at the start of the year. Um, he always uh, was interested in, in trying to bring uh, a delegation from h &S over. Um, but the actual scope of the, the visit, I think, if it does go ahead, would be um, some clinics to be held uh, in Sydney and in Melbourne. Um, but also underpinning all that is some discussions that uh, the Federation would like to have with Soccer Australia um, about a potential, uh, even a, a potential uh, game between the Vatrini and uh, Australia. Um, but I think a lot of that's going to hinge on where, whether Australia uh, can get through as an automatic qualifier to the World Cup. Because yeah. obviously mm -hmm. yeah. your respective calendars will differ a lot, whereas... Uh, Croatia obviously have qualified, so they'll be looking for, for friendlies, um, whereas Australia's route to, to Qatar is yet to be determined. Yeah, yeah good point. Now, you would, um, as we mentioned, two weeks ago was the AGM for the um, Croatian Soccer Association of Australia. Um, we had a couple of um, long-standing members have stepped down. One of them is not Steve Skordniak, of course. Um, he's, <laughs> he's still there. <laughs> but um, um, do tell us, who's, who's in, the, in the current committee and um, who, who's um, departed the helm? Yeah, the well, helm we, we had, over the last two years, our committee... Um, it's probably the first time, and maybe Josip and you, Taunch, you may be able to correct me, but we had a, um, a committee that basically covered nearly every state of Australia where we've got teams. So um, we had Bogdana Sliškovic, uh, long-term Western Knights president, 
um, was part of the committee and she chose uh, to, because of a whole heap of commitments, both at a club level and a full club level, um, yep. to not seek re-election. Um, and uh, so she served for two years. And uh, unfortunately as well, uh, Adrian Pulic, um, Gold Coast Knights president um, and very successful businessman as well, uh, after five years on the Savers, has um, uh, has gone on to uh, uh, has got enough on his plate, both at home, a young family, and you saw some developments that are happening at his club, and uh, the amount that his club has changed uh, during his tenure and the profile of it has been uh, fantastic, and it's obviously uh, all culminating in the the biggest game in the club's arguably in the club's history with. Um, uh, last 16 spot against uh, Melbourne Victory coming up in a few weeks' time. So Adrian and Gordana have stood down and uh, the five of us that were uh, together with them last year have all um, stayed on. So it's myself, uh, Steve Skodnak uh, from Adelaide, um, as we've discussed. Uh, I think he's up to about year number 16 or 17 with the service. Uh, <laughs> Tom Yossi, Yossi reckons 104 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, Maybe not Tom that Luk much, but... Yeah. Tom Lukic, um, long-time uh, secretary um, and uh, our treasurer, uh, I think eight years now, uh, mm -hmm. Katarina Yusuf, um, based here in Melbourne as well. And uh, so Katarina, Tom, Steve, myself, and uh, Paul Woodham, who is a life member of uh, Glenorchy Knights, uh, former president of Glenorchy Knights, um, and someone that is... Uh, grown very close to the Croatian community with his association and he, he and his wife's association at the club. Um, it's fantastic to see that they come off a, a, a fantastic year uh, by winning the, the Tasmanian NPL. So Paul Brilliant. stays on and this will be his third year um, as part of our service. Wonderful. Great stuff. And well, well done to, to you and the, and the team for uh, taking, taking on the reins and continuing on. Oh, thank you, Josip. Uh, yeah, it's uh, whether it's. I mean, this is relatively easy. It's um, without our clubs, we haven't got a service. So, to, you mentioned uh, a couple of the clubs that uh, had some changes at their committee levels, um, and all our clubs across the, across the country, without the the people um, in from an administrative perspective, uh, from a committee perspective, driving, uh, you know, putting their hand up, volunteering, and what have you, we don't have clubs. So. Um, what we do is, in comparison, relatively easy in comparison to those that um, are serving committees at Clubland. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Um, now, Yuda, before we do let you go, thank you very much once again for joining us here on the pilot show of the Oz Crow Soccer um, Soccer Show, um, mate. We did mention. Oh, I mentioned um, we had a um, Stuart Mellon. One of uh, he's an Englishman down at North Ge North Geelong. He's a uh, little boy plays in the um, um, juniors there. And he's a big Luton Town fan. And um, he kept egging me on about, we're going to do a Luton Town podcast now. We, we've got another one, Yuda. Podcast. But Yuda, your, your love affair with Luton Town goes back almost four decades. Um, tell us, how did you actually fall in love with Luton Town? You know, not, you know, Arsenal, Manchester City, Chelsea, Liverpool, or whatever the case may be. Luton Town. <laughs> Uh, you really want to waste some time on, on, on this story. Um, no, I mean, listen, it's uh, it's reflective of my age, yeah, so I've been supporting <laughs> Luton for what it's worth uh, 40 years. Um, so when we first started, uh, my cousin, who might be uh, viewing this podcast, uh, elder cousin, also Yorda Dragovic, who was a mad um, Tottenham Hotspur fan and an and a Albanian mate of his, Mick, who was a, a, a mad Nottingham Forest fan. Um, so I sort of started following and picked Liverpool. And uh, they said, you can't go for Liverpool, you're jumping on the bandwagon. Little did I realise that Nottingham Forest were European champions and Tottenham were winning FA Cups every year, so I felt guilty. And um, ended up picking a team that was in the second division at that point in time. And, um, uh, you know, the, the, the law according to sporting teams is when you've got one, you stick with them through uh, thick and thin. And, uh, yeah, it's uh, Luton are back in... The championship now, uh, third year and comfortably mid-table. Um, and, you know, six or seven years ago, they were non-league. So um, they've had three promotions in five or six years and um, lowest budget in the championship and doing well. So it's good to know that there is a, at least one more person in Australia that um, <laughs> follows them. 
Now, now there, there, there's, a, there's a good reason why we bring up Luton Town because there is a Croatian connection at Luton Town. Tell us a bit more about that. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, one of the uh, reserve goalkeepers, uh, Simon Sluga uh, from the Echo, yes. I think. Uh, yeah, he's, yep. he's Luton's number one um, and has been since he signed. Uh, so this is his third year there. So uh, believe it or not, there is a... Um, Usually, I think he's just lost his spot. Um, so he, he was the number three keeper for most of the games during the World Cup qualifying. Um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's always interesting to to, to uh, read the Luton chats and what have you that they've got a Croatian international on their books. Um, but yeah, now he's got a love. He's got a great name, Simon Sluga. But uh, there's another there's another uh, goalkeeper at um, NK Rijeka. Speaking of Rijeka. Zlomislic, I think is his name, Ivan Zlomislic, and uh, actually he's... happens to be the cousin of um, Slavko Banajic, if he's, uh, Banajic, if yeah. he's uh, tuning in, who's uh, very, very active on all of the social media circles and is a regular contributor to the Oscro um, FC um, Facebook page. Um, and speaking of the Oscro FC Facebook page, Matt Jurcevic from WA, Western Australia, him and uh, another one of our Neretvani Jure, uh, 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 Tony Grgic. Um, down from Melbourne, they run that um, Facebook page. So if you do want to know a little bit more about all the news and what you're not, it's a, it's, it's, it's a very good kind of like a news swapping um, um, Facebook page. That's Oscro FC, A U S C R O F C. Good to see um, there's a lot of interest for um, Croatian soccer, both here in Australia and in Croatia um, in, in Australia. So uh, we're, we're going to be part of that project and we're going to be trying to uh, certainly. Um, provide a lot of um, uh, PR opportunities for all of our clubs here in Australia and including all the members members of the service. So we look forward to that in the new year. Uh, well, no, congratulations once again on the initiative that both of you have shown and, and the courage um, to put a platform like this together. Um, and I'm sure that uh, in time that uh, you'll uh, be able to Get a captive audience um, and uh, it's good to know that um, from a service perspective like I said that um, I mean we, we obviously we've got our own Facebook page but such a platform to it to, and a lot of the clubs well not um, you know Melbourne Knights have got their night train as well um, yeah. but it's good to know that this platform uh, exists from a from a broader Croatian perspective so uh, all the best with the with your initiative guys and we'll be Thanks, going Jordan. to air on a Tuesday night, hot on the heels of the night train, which um, if they still do stay on the Monday night, um, it'll provide uh, viewers all around Australia with uh, lots of weekday football action from an Australian-Croatian perspective. Jude, thanks very much once again for joining us. Um, have a, a great Christmas, uh, New Year to you and your family. Wishing you all the very, very best. And I uh, hope everything is uh, um, as, as well as can be expected in these uh, unexpectedly difficult times, I suppose. Yeah, thank you kindly, Tonchi, and Sertan Božić, Una Prid, to the Prusac family and to the Zilic family, all of the Zilic's all over, um, and to all <laughs> your viewers as well, uh, and hoping that, uh, like I said, 2022 allows all our clubs and their extended social clubs to, uh, to find a, a return back to normal. And uh, we look forward to, like I said, hopefully congregating in 10 months' time at King Tom and uh, be more than happy to, to keep you updated on developments across the year. Absolutely. Good on you, Jure. And that was Jure uh, Dragovic. Um, no, it, we, the reason I know that story about uh, Luton Town, we're all family friends. And as kids, when, when, when the Dragovic's used to come up to Geelong and visit us, um, his, his dad's actually my cool. <laughs> and, and Jure was just uh, crazy about this one player called Paul Walsh. Um, yeah, was was it was was the Gary Ablett of English football in the seventies? So uh, yeah. let's. Uh, <laughs> and there was a Gary Ablett playing for Liverpool around about that time, wasn't there? There was an Ablett, yeah, Gary Ablett. It was, yeah, it was. Yeah, late seventies, early eighties. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's all right. Yeah, yeah. Yossi, Well, that brings us to the end of our pilot episode. It's been an absolute pleasure. Been really, really exciting. Um, before we we go, there's uh, down the bottom there. Subscribe to our exclusive Oz Crow Soccer Show channel on YouTube. Head over there. You'll be able to see all the replays and you'll be able to sit, watch all of the um, snippets and what you're not right on our YouTube channel. As we build that up, as we build the Facebook page, um, we look forward to uh, to uh, providing a very entertaining 2022 from an Australian-Croatian 
soccer football perspective, however you want to call it. That's right. Yeah. Thank, thanks for sharing your time with us, Tonchi, and thank you to everyone who tuned in. If you don't catch, if you didn't catch us live, I guess we can, they can catch us on YouTube and replay us. And Absolutely. we look forward to and we look forward to kicking it off uh, in 2022 with big news and sharing it from all over the country. Good on you. Lakunoch. Lakunoch.